so this example, I'm going to dial back to what we were doing before. Um, so I just showed you how to sort of extract like radial information from it and apply it to sort of a, a, an emulated mechanism. Um, and in this case, we're again going to focus on our fingers and try to get all this contact information. One of the issues with the Sensil object uh, is that it's kind of slow and it introduces some latency. So if you want that really quick response, especially if you're doing percussive stuff or multi-touch, um, it might feel a little bit slow. So uh, our MIDI response is actually a little bit faster. Uh, so that's kind of going to be give us your lowest latency performance. So wouldn't it be cool if you could get like all that uh, sort of anywhere swirly interaction, massage interaction from MIDI? Well, yes, you can. Uh, what we can do is set the morph up to act as just sort of one big MPE key. And the cool thing about it is that it will detect all those individual presses. Um, and so when it is um, sending, let me go to the overhead. Um, so when you have it in MPE mode and it's just one big, imagine just one big piano key uh, or a Buchla Thunder key that covers the whole thing. So you get individual contacts. Um, kind of the unfortunate part is that each individual contact is sending the same note, but it is sending on its, same, on its own channel and sending its own aftertouch and pitch bend. So we can take advantage of that fact and take advantage of 14-bit MIDI to actually get high-resolution multi-touch information through MIDI. Um, but you're going to need a little bit of programming to turn that into something you can use so you can take those notes and you know, create a scale from your fingers. So let's take a look at how you can do that. Um, this example is um, from our C74 Max examples. It's called Multi-Touch from MPE. So before you do anything, what you're going to want to do is open the uh, Sensil app. And I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. And uh, I have two morphs here. i got to select the right one. Yes. OK, so that one is the one I'm actively working with here. And what we want to do is we want to load a special um, overlay mapping. So uh, I'll go to No Overlay. I've already loaded it on this. Um, but to show you how to do that, you go to Import Map and go to your documents, uh, personal documents, um, wherever you put this, this GitHub repo. Um, I have mine in projects, C74 Max examples, um, M multi touched from MPE, and the other folder is this, the MPE to multipress. And so we'll open that. I've already done it, so I'll just hit cancel. And that's going to create a no overlay overlay. So um, uh, let's see what it what this does. I actually have two of the same things here. Um, instead of actually creating a an actual MPE pad sending pitch bend and CC seventy four and channel aftertouch, we make everything a control. Um, so you can take a look down here at the bottom, and I have. Uh, the MPE is set up to send note C3 um, and send CC 10, 11, and 12 for X, Y, and Z. Because that way we can enable 14-bit CC and get 14-bit values from each contact. So we get a higher res than we normally get. Um, so it's a little bit different from MPE um, in that regards. And then the pitch bend, you can refine that. Um, you can make it so that it's super sensitive and, you know, would pitch bend a lot um, by putting that at 130. Um, I do the 460, so it's just kind of a, a graceful thing. Um, let's try 230, and so that's one octave for the full width. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and send that modification. And quit here. So now that we have done, as our patch instructed, to load the MPE multipress sensor map, um, let's take a look at what we're doing. Um, so there's no sensible object involved. We're just initializing this menu, 
with our MIDI devices. And I'm going to select Sensor Morph. Um, and the first thing I do is uh, use MIDI in and create these touch lists. So I have this abstraction that um, does a lot of the nasty work for you. <laughs> so this creates a list that is just, uh, what does it describe here? And it creates one for each contact. The uh, ID, velocity, X, Y, pressure, left, right, uh, top, bottom, on and off. So that way we know that I did some cool massaging here. So we actually get a little bit more information about getting, knowing if a contact's on the left or the right or on the top or the bottom, or if it's on or off. And we can use that to convert um, to regular MPE. Uh, so we're taking that high resolution data um, you could use it as is um, and apply it to graphics or apply it to whatever you want. Um, but I just wanted to convert it to regular MPE so we could play a, a VST or a standard synthesizer um, or forward it on to Ableton Live, which doesn't do MPE, um, forward it on to Logic or Bitwig. Um, so there's, again, a poly. So I have uh, 10 instances of the simple synthesizer and I can do this wonderful stuff again. So I have my keyboard from the future and it's super responsive. I have um, X. Uh, there's a little bit of a margin here. You can actually, uh, I can show you how you can get around that. That's worth showing. Um, so you can see it's kind of dead dead zone here on the edges. Um, and you can see that in the Sensil app where we have a no overlay set up as an MPE pad. What you can do is create uh, an innovators overlay that does the same sort of thing. So you would go to layout, add area, um, make it as big as you want. And this will actually cover more of the morph. It's, I forget why it's like that, but there's a good reason. Um, and then we would go to map and create this as an MPE, oops, MPE XYZ pad, um, and then assign these CCs, enable 14-bit MIDI. And then on your no overlay, you would load uh, an innovators overlay instead of, um, so you'd flash this innovators overlay to the morph and then load the innovators overlay uh, for the no overlay. So you can see you can just do that to innovators. Um, and that actually gives you more space. But I did not do that. So let us proceed. So I have the pitch uh, filter. And volume on pressure. So cool. So now we can have this very responsive weirdo instrument of the future. Um, and again, in this patch, you can substitute a VST um, or build your own weird synthesizer, put in a granular synth or whatever. Um, we can also extract, similar to the API, we can get the number of contacts. It's ugly. That's right. Uh, but we can do it um, uh, just by sensing what note uh, node ins are coming on what channel, and if there's something, we create this contact list. And we can see that is um, just checking each channel to see if there's a note. Build up that list and then get the sum, and that's how many contacts we have. And then we also have like this interesting left versus right. So here's what's coming into the touch list. You can see there's the ID, the velocity, and then the X, Y, Z, and force. And then there's also the left, right, um, top, bottom, and on off values. Uh, the six element is left or right side. So that way you can sort of get a list of the active contacts on the left side. 
And you can use that um, in, in different ways. Like, so in this example here, um, I can actually get the average force. And I've used this in installations before. So you can sort of get the average force that's on the left side with the active contacts. So I don't want to go into too much stuff here. Um, a little bit of a uh, multi-object patch, but it's just manipulating lists. So it's all sort of ZL, ZL stuff, um, which is a really wonderful object for managing lists. So what I do is I can figure out like, am I pressing very lightly in total here? So even if I add one sort of hard press on the left, it brings it up a little bit or in totality. So I can use that average value. Um, I use an installation to control a 3D world. So I could uh, rotate a 3D world by leaning hard on the left or right. Um, and maybe I can show that example to you. That would be nice. Um, it's a little bit hard to get rolling. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's a way of using multi-touch uh, with MIDI. Um, so that's the implications with Mac, so you can get that high resolution stuff. The other cool thing is, is that let's say you're, you're not dealing with Macs for a particular project and you're working with an MPE DAW-like Bitwig. So um, you can actually do this a little bit differently. Um, the, uh, go to the Sensel app. And what we can do is create um, one big MPE pad, just traditional MPE. Um, so uh, that's not it. Uh, big MPE right here. So this is just a big MPE pad sending traditional MPE channel uh, CC74, pitch bend, and channel after touch. Um, and I'm going to send this to the morph. So my uh, blank overlay works like that. And I'll show you an example in Bitwig um, because Bitwig gives you some nice programming capabilities. So I can actually assign notes to each channel. And the cool thing is, is then now we can really sort of uh, work within the context of a, a DAW or something that maybe we're more familiar with um, or somebody else is more familiar with. Um, and let's see, I want to open the multi-touch MPE. Uh, so here we're just taking the morph as, an, as a MIDI MPE device. And I have this rack here. So I need to make that more visible. What can I do about that? I have a setup for that, I think. Bear with me. Oh, hey, look at that. Um, there we go. I need to shrink this down a little bit. The magic of OBS. It's pretty amazing. Clunky as it is, it's quite amazing. All right, so here is a zoomed view of my uh, the bottom part of my bitwig. Uh, so you can see I have this rack um, and I need to move this over a little bit here. Okay, so I have each channel sort of a channel filter. Um, so each note is getting filtered uh, and then I can apply just a transposition to that particular channel. And then I and then, so now I've managed to create, I can create a sort of scale with each contact, um, but I'm not really using it in the weirdo sort of continua, continuous harp. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm using each note to um, create a sort of um, arpeggiation for each finger. So I can press harder and change the speed. And then as I go up on the, on the Y value, I can add some effects. And that's keeping a consistent note. 
and now I can add another note. So again, we've entered uh, Star Trek realm, um, and I am the spaceman playing the future instrument. And everybody's dancing and wearing monochromatic clothes. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a, an off-topic application of what we're doing, um, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, so that is sort of taking advantage of MIDI and some of the unique qualities of the morph to be able to uh, just sort of generate these unusual multi-touch interactions um, in different environments and uh, just do it using MIDI rather than with the API.